here. You, I've got the settings more or less the way they were before. So cool. Yeah, and I can jump on Twitch or this, which whichever is easier for for that end of things. Um, why don't I share for you? Oh, yeah, that's gonna knock you out of the sharing, but uh, the test scan window. No, I guess the OBS window is fine. I don't know. OBS window is probably fine. <laughs> that way you can see the chat. If I move this thing, you can see the chat uh, directly in the the window, and you don't have to bounce back and forth. Oh so, yeah, cool. And yeah, it's showing up okay. Looks like everything's working. I have a. Uh, this weird system now where I have two video cameras facing me. <laughs> so, like, uh, what you're seeing in the zoom window, Joe, is one of them. And then I've got this, like, yeah. su super wide-angle one. So if you're wondering... I, yeah, you get the whole lab in that one. <laughs> yeah. That's actually uh, a, um, a webcam from one of the classrooms. But nobody's teaching anything right now. So hmm. I figured it would be okay for me to steal it. And then... I could have two video cameras running at the same time, which is super weird, but <laughs> <laughs> whatever. So what I did for this, uh, I only prepped samples from Grove. So um, I have a whole nother set of just samples from Ashfall 17 or whichever one it was we were looking at. Um, mm -hmm. So for, uh, for the carousel that we're looking at, uh, here, every one of these is Grove. This is all going to be Grove. Okay. Yeah, and I basically just used almost every bit of, uh, there's a little bit left of our material, but I was like, you know, what are we saving it for? Uh, you have some still, and Mark has some still. Um, so I figured this would be the best chance of us to capture everything that we needed. So I just put like an undiluted sample <laughs> into the SEM. Yeah, that sounds fun. And um, uh, that actually means that all the samples have pretty good concentrations. Great. Um, and then I thought, well, maybe we'll find that little weird thing again. Um, but even if we don't, we should get some pretty good views of um, whatever else is here um, through these. So I've been seeing this uh, the other day on the stream on Monday. We looked at these samples, but a different looked at like one and seven and I'm on number six um, on the carousel and we've been seeing this thing uh, oh maybe this uh, actually is that the Solophora we're interested in is it a Solophora I don't know I think that's what we called it at least I, I really couldn't tell what this was uh, but it looks like I thought it looks like there's an Alakasira covering the critical spot on this one <laughs> <laughs> well, so the thing that I thought was sort of interesting is I thought it looked like a mono raphid, and I don't see a raphi on this one. So I mm. thought it looked like Rosithidium, maybe. Um, oh, you know, I did see your one of your pictures had a note labeled Rosithidium. Yeah, so I thought maybe it was a Rosithidium because I thought, oh, but I hadn't seen any with no, uh, with the, with the Raphiless valve. And this one doesn't look like it has a Raphi. Although I guess we should double check. Rosithidium is another one of these poorly defined <laughs> genera. Yes. Um, it, it, I guess it could be Acnanthidium, except, uh, in my view of it, it doesn't look saddle shaped or bent at all. Mm. Um, so I would guess from that that it yeah sounds like rosithidium yeah that that makes it you know it's not platessa so I guess rosithidium is our only option <laughs> um, <laughs> but there's enough of them around uh, on cool. the on the sample like here's another one that's an internal view and they actually have some really interesting like we saw some we got some pictures on Monday that you don't have yet um, oh okay cool. But the, they have the pore covers are visible in some of them. So you can kind of see they have really weird, like, pore cover around the margin of the pore in some cases. So, Great. Yeah. So that little thing that we saw is really small. And the 
Thalassia question mark? Yeah. The or weird organism. Uh, <laughs> and I have no idea what it is. Uh, and also, hello Pacific Plankton and Mama Bonbon. Um, so I haven't found any more of them though. Uh, although I wasn't really like just scouring the samples yet. So that's on my agenda for the rest of the week, basically. Um, I was going to try to get in yesterday and spend some time on the SEM, but I had meetings, and I got meetings on Thursday, so uh, maybe Friday I'll come in and just try to grind away at trying to find these little... Those things are really small, and I got lucky finding the first one, so I feel like uh, pretty uncommon. And... Uh, I don't know if you said you saw a little bit of the conversation because it was after you had left, but Mark said he didn't remember seeing it in the in the LM at all. So. Yeah, and I looked through his light microscopes looking for him um, and the old posters that we have from this and didn't see anything like that. <laughs> yeah. So, what is this? a fragment of something I think um, yeah so I think we've got some pretty good characterization of the cycloteloid creatures in here thingies that's my science word yeah <laughs> and I don't know so I thought I would just sort of tool around and look for other views of some of the things that we have and oh, we got some of these as well on the stream on Monday, where the oh, okay. Alakasira with the I don't know. That's great. They've got the. Oh wow, that's super well preserved. Yeah, the <laughs> sort of spidery looking pore covers on them, and you could see the connections between the spines there as well, pretty nice. pretty clearly. I'm and this is to... this is Grove Lake, not Ashfall. It's Grove, yeah. Well, because there, we don't see as many Alcasira. Yeah. So let me actually play with some settings, and uh, maybe you can see what chat's saying, and see if Mark has answered the email at all. The wobble is perfect. We're at 500 nanometers, and it's not moving. So I will accept that. Um, and the stigmation is still a question mark, but it looks like it's pretty good. There's always a fear that I'll tweak it and somehow it'll get worse, <laughs> but I don't think so. I think we're... We're just at the limit of what we can do with uh, beam intensity seven. So let me drop that to six and we can take a longer photo because this is a nice specimen. And I'll zoom out to some sort of a reasonable magnification instead of 200,000 times. Oh, hang on, I got one thing else I could do here. We're not to the... Yeah, that'll help. need to make a decision on what's going to be in focus at that distance so okay we'll do this so it's sitting at a weird angle and this part's going to be out of focus and that part will be sharply in focus so yeah that's right i think the the spines and a couple 
Rubra being in focus would make a really nice shot for this one. It's the uh, artsy, doing an artsy shot. You know, for the coffee table books. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen a, a diatom coffee table book. Do those show up at meetings sometimes? No, but I always threaten to make one. Uh, I probably should. <laughs> Uh, Pacific Plankton has been providing links for all of the diatom genus names for us. <laughs> nice. And uh, using my little bot command that links to the diatoms of North America site. And simultaneously working on our spelling. So, Me Fox Hello and uh, Whiskery Ant. That's a good name. Uh, Set phasers to stun. Uh, yeah, this picture's actually turning out okay. Sometimes I'm okay at this photography thing. Uh, yeah. Earlier today, I uh, I don't think Maine's getting the Brood X, are you? You guys are too far east, right? Yeah, I don't think we're we're. So we're ex- we're not singing. <laughs> we're we're experiencing the Brood X, and uh, I found. Uh, some cicadas on my way in. Can you and, go outside without being deafened? <laughs> well, they're not actually that bad here yet. Um, in Bloomington, they are deafening. Um, <laughs> here, they, they are just starting to emerge. So I've seen them the last two days, um, but I haven't heard them at night from my house or anything like that. So I'm still waiting for the you know, cacophony to begin. <laughs> but, uh, but I did... Bring some. I brought one in that was living, but its wings were kind of wrinkly, and it was soaked. And I put it on the uh, the stereoscope, and I got some really nice views. And I did a little stream this morning from the stereoscope with some living and uh, and some dead ones, and also some of the um, the molting casings. So yes. I'm I'm calling it right now. I I think this picture is going to end up in the in the manuscript. <laughs> okay. I I have a feeling. <laughs> you like it that much, huh? Well, it it uh, you can describe both the spines and the cribra, and this funny angular. I don't know what you'd call it, gash or or. Um, on the bottom right of the screen there's kind of that ridge that that goes across there. it's it's from where the, the, the girdle band. yeah where the girdle band has constricted yeah yeah so those are really interesting uh this the spines are really interesting to me because they're like uh i don't know keystone shaped maybe mm-hmm. so and i don't know that i've seen many with like a keystone shape like that they're puzzle piece like but then they have sort of a keystone shape so. And they they look like they have texture on the the underside, like towards their sister cell. There's that uh, little divot that comes up and out of the the spine. Yes, there's a there's like a little tiny mini spine. Yeah. Here, mm-hmm. little these little bumps that are sticking the protrusions. Yeah. They've got spines on spines in their holes <laughs> on holes. It's good. Not bad. I should have done it like this so you could see the actual ringleys too. I wonder if oh, we could, yeah, yeah. Can you get the see. internal? Sort of. Yeah, there's one in there. It's just dark. Uh... Let's see. Let's see if we can get inside there. (laughs) I'm a little skeptical, but... No, we can get in there. We'll just climb right inside this little olicocyra. So with those two angles, I could, I could make a model of that, and we can see how the water transports from one side to the other. 
How was, <laughs> did you did you have a meeting with your engineering people? I did. I think uh, I'm on the right track. I need to do some dimensional analysis because uh, nobody really works in fluid dynamics at the micro scale like that. Yeah, that's the question I was I was sort of thinking about. Is like at the scale that you're at. What happens? <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, we're we're working on a workaround that should turn out pretty well. Huh. Okay. Cool. And they have some some better software that will handle small particles um, a little better than the software I was using. Yeah. Uh, me Fox, if you're wondering, uh, scanning electron microscopes scan across the surface. They uh, they hit the surface with an electron beam, and then electrons are like ejected from whatever they hit as well. So those electrons that are coming in will hit electrons in the organism or whatever the specimen is, and then uh, eject them from the outside of the actual sample. And they're captured by the secondary electron detector, those we call secondary electrons and um, it moves along point by point and basically knocks out electrons and then captures the ones that come out of the actual, uh, out of the specimen. So is there better scanner, uh, faster or more zoom? Yes, all of those things are possible. They have what's called, um, so this is a tungsten based SEM and they have a field emission based SEM which has a different type of element in it that uh, she can fire a tighter beam that's uh, going to create a slightly better resolution uh, image. Um, it doesn't go any faster, uh, not necessarily. The speed of the image that it's drawing for us point by point is not limited by like the computer speed or anything else. It's about how resolved you want the image. So I could ramp up the resolution to something ridiculous, like 16,000 by 16,000, and then capture it uh, at this speed. And it would take uh, seven hours to collect the image. So, you know, like, it, it's based on how many pixels and it's getting information from each pixel, but the speed has to do with the sort of resolution. So, uh, but they do have something called an ultra fast scanning electron microscope which will scan a little bit faster than this. And those cost about five times as much as this instrument, maybe maybe more, um, and really are, aren't readily available. So you can really see the uh, internal structure. Sometimes I do good work, you know? <laughs> this is I've nice. once or twice. <laughs> this, is a, this is a nice image of the inside of that Olicosira. It's really interesting from the outside uh, you just see that webbing across it, and it looks like each hole or or rib that goes across has like a triangular ridge that leads up to it from the inside. Yeah, um, and I think the inside covering and the outside covering are they're not completely independent, but uh, they you know they they fan out internally into sort of like a little more like sheet like structure, right? So. Do these have a chamber between the two? Like a stephanodiscus discus has an inside covering and outside covering, I, or is it one big thing? I don't know if they're loculate. Um, okay. I mean, we could try to find a broken one um, and see if we could find, you know, whether it has two uh, pore covers, one on the inside and one on the outside, or whether that's just, sometimes the pore cover is just like halfway between inside and outside, which is what I think is going on here, but um, I'm not sure. That's a that's a pretty good image, you know. Let's uh, actually let's do one where it's the whole thing, and I can so I can tell that these two parts went together. And where we have the uh, a bit of that internal view still visible, I think this will be okay. And we'll just go ahead and capture that as well while we're at it. Just so we have it. 
Um, so we can do like a close-up inset or something if we wanted to. Mm -hmm. Just Showcase. those three images are going to be one figure for for this species, and that'll be pretty pretty descriptive. <laughs> Do the die time name commands work? Yes. How do they go? Yes. You just type uh, exclamation point G, and then uh, I think you just have to. I think it can be anybody, or maybe uh, moderators and VIPs can can type it. Uh, and then it should work. So you just need to know how to spell the genus name after that. So good luck if you're not good with spelling uh, at Latin uh, diatom names. But uh, generally speaking, yes, uh, the commands all work. And the bird commands also work. If you want to um, look up uh, Carolina Wren, you can. Uh, it's just the same thing with the B. And not the genus name, but you can type whatever in there. It actually will do a search based on what you what you type. So you can just type wren, it will show you all the wrens for North America. Yeah, yeah, this is good. So have you made any new models? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> You got other stuff going on. Yeah, well, running the the fluid dynamics is just at this point. It's just always in the background of my computer. Mm -hmm. um, running a slightly different angle or a slightly different flow rate, mm -hmm. um, which takes like eighty five percent of my computer processing. So I really can't do much else while that's going. You need more computers. Well, that was one of the solutions from meeting with uh, with these engineer type folks. Is they're they're going to give me the login so I can run it on their computers. <laughs> Do they don't have access to the supercomputers? Uh, we can, but these things probably don't need it yet. Uh -huh. So if we want to do like a model an entire diatom bloom to mm -hmm. see how a bloom might influence the, the physics of the water going on, then you'd, you'd jump to the supercomputer. That sounds like a crazy cool idea. I think so. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of the inverse question. What, what does water do to diatoms? And then the inverse is what do diatoms do to water? Yeah. I like it. You gotta look, look both ways before you cross the street. <laughs> the, uh, there's a lot we could kind of find out by just modeling stuff, I think, that hasn't been tried. So you're out there carving a niche for yourself. That's the idea. In the, uh, weird modeling Sci scientific ether yeah it's <laughs> cool any news on the job front waiting to hear back okay you have other jobs you're also looking at yeah I applied for a similar position at the Lake Tahoe Research Center, oh. um, which is a, a plankton researcher, both zoos and phytos, so plants, animals, anything floating. That's cool. Uh, what's the name of that guy who runs that? I don't know off the top of my head. Oh, oh there's maybe a... Is a piece of a tetracyclus. Tetra? Yeah. Oh, get that circle though. That's a bit more interesting. I think it's just a front view, foul view of a Olicosira. Yeah. It's a valve view. Hmm. Cool. It's not even anything exciting on it. <laughs> Flat. Olicosira piece. 
Yeah, I don't think that's actually even very interesting. I want to find like a whole zoom out a little and see what we can see for Tetris. Oh, there's a big Olicosyra. This is the one we saw before. It's a, we were seeing a little bit smaller version of it, but it has sort of the square shaped. Let's see about getting those pores in focus. Oh. Wow. Uh, oh. Yeah, there we are. Oh. Oh, look, a little bit of the girdle band is still on it as well. That's pretty. Let's take a look at the girdle band. The preservation from this site is incredible. I would think we pulled this out of a lake yesterday. I mean, usually the girdle bands are, you know, that's not the sort of thing you usually see on six million year old fossils. Yeah, even the, like the, the, the pore coverings, the cribra are, tend to be dissolved or something. Yeah, I mean, this is I the first thing to go. Do. This is yeah. the this is the first thing to go, so that's a good clue that the rest of it's still going to be perfect, basically. That's what you get for burying it in feet of ash over. Right. Yeah, Buried in silica. <laughs> so I guess I'll leave it like this. I don't know. Yeah, that's okay. These are kind of interesting. Everything there is kind of weird and interesting. Okay. Is that maybe a room of portula? Well, I'll take a look when it gets visible again. Oh, yep. Sorry, I hit the picture tape button. Uh, well, I got let's a see. Time <laughs> to find it. Uh, uh, what part of the park? world Hello. are these from? Yeah, you these... can answer some questions. <laughs> yeah, so what part of the world is this from? This is from a lake that was buried in ash, and it is in the northeast corner of Nebraska. And this is part of a project looking at two lakes uh, that are about 20 miles from each other. One was buried in a ash deposit from the Yellowstone supervolcano at about 12 million years ago. And then six million years later, the exact same thing happened, uh, where a neighboring lake got buried from a subsequent Yellowstone supervolcano eruption. Uh, so within 20 miles of each other, we can move up about six million years and find I wouldn't say completely different diatoms, but uh, they're pretty different. That is what I was thinking might be the Rim of Portula, but I guess it could just be a smushed in areola. Oh, this thing? Yeah. Um, I don't know, that's a really weird shape. Yeah, but there is also a, a one that you can see kind of straight on that's also that weird shape. Uh, just Here. about that. Yeah. This is really intricate inside of these. Yeah. <laughs> That's not just like little spokes. There's little spokes that come off of those little spokes. You can see them here as well. It's super intricate in there. Those are fascinating. So at this scale, what is that across like a few nanometers within, you know, the holes within the holes? So there's the scale bar. Uh, so the whole field of view is six microns, seven. And so if you wanted to know, like, uh, let's see, you're asking like, how far is it from, oops, I don't want that. I want the, what's this thing? Somebody's been messing with my settings. Okay, hang on. I'm gonna save this picture. Olga Syrah. 
a girdle bane. Um, and then we can. Are you just curious about how big is an areoli? Uh, the the smaller holes within the areoli is what I'm really curious about. That whole uh, areoli is about 700 nanometers. Mm -hmm. And the little tiny holes yeah, about 100 nanometers. 150 maybe. Wow. Small. You're getting, you're, you're getting close to the point where that <laughs> could be some uh, legitimately filter out some molecules and not others, right? Like a like a water molecule is a, th a third of a nanometer, I think. Let's look inside this one. That is, those are wild. Let me play with some stuff. I'll start by doing this. And then... You can answer questions while I try to make the beam even better, if you'd like. Uh, I checked the email. Oops, I want to get rid of this measure. Um, Mark said that he's doing a little bit of extra field work, so he's going to be a bit late. Oh, fun. So, we already guessed he was going to be a bit late when we started and he wasn't here. Let's see. I mean, we're at 215,000 times magnification. <laughs> and uh, when the engineer guy came, he goes, can you get a 100,000 times magnification image out of it? <laughs> and I started laughing. <laughs> I was like, yeah? I can. I don't know if we'll get any better than that, though. Um, so I'm just going to back out a little bit. Maybe a little bit farther. That's about as good as we're going to do. Oh, I should do a glossary. That's a good idea. Uh, yeah, and so I'll play with that next. I think they're, uh, it'll be feasible, so. 
Pacific says water is about 2.27 nanometers across, according yeah. to Google. <laughs> Can't trust Google. What do those guys know? <laughs> well, I'm just starting to think. Uh, so these, these pore coverings might just, just wild ideas, no real evidence. But, uh, you know, these, these could act as sort of a molecule sorting device like a coin sorter you know put all the quarters to one side all the <laughs> dimes in the middle <laughs> uh, i don't really know the size of like a phosphate or a nitrate or things that would be important to start sorting but. if you give people something to google they'll google it <laughs> that's that's what we do here yeah Hey, Del. How you doing? Uh, we're looking at diatoms. Can you believe it? <laughs> this is the closest thing to an old TV static from 20... Yeah, yeah, it definitely is. Uh, if you want a poltergeist, let me know. Because uh, we don't have TVs with static anymore. Um, but I can do static on the SEM pretty well. So if you need to talk to some uh, dead... Indian people that were buried here uh, 200 years ago that we've disturbed let me know and I'll see what I can do um, I think that was the premise of Poltergeist wasn't it? Did you ever watch Poltergeist Joe? You're too young for that I, I am too young for that Okay <laughs> Howdy science pals uh, yeah, the detail's okay, Commander Shafard. Uh, I guess somebody didn't like it and told me that there was a 64 beam SEM I could be using, and it's like, you know, I'll just put it on my Amazon wish list. It'll be fine. <laughs> we we are looking at 60,000 times magnification, so. Uh, oh, you watched uh, Poltergeist with your daughter? That seems like a scary thing to show your daughter, <laughs> Del. <laughs> you don't want to be responsible for the implosion of the IU, ISU campus. Well, I mean, it can only help at this point. You always order... Hey, Sweepy Bee, hello. Um, I'm going to... We should send out a shout-out to Sweepy Bee. Running my own shout outs like a champ. I don't have to have my moderators do everything for me. Uh, we're taking in a super slow photo. This one's for you, me, Fox. Uh, you just gotta wait for it. We're looking at some really cool tiny stuff. And we're looking at the tiny parts of the tiny stuff. <laughs> you do the same. <laughs> I'm faster than my delay, yeah. That's, I've been practicing my typing to uh, make sure to steal your gerbs. So I just realized that the the far left two areoli on there are half covered by the spines from the other row. Correct. This is the spine cover, and this is the shape of it. It's very, very much like a yeah. chess queen uh, head. Right? Yeah. And then it actually has like a little inset groove. Man, that that's a pretty good uh, Latin. reason to, to name a diatom, right? Yeah. Chess queen probably has a direct Latin. Yes. Is, it, is chess old enough to have? Uh, probably. Or chess is kind of middle ages. Well, probably not. I don't know. What's the original name of a chess queen piece? That's. I mean, we could just call it. We could call it, you know, like, after the, whatever the queen wears is a crown, you know? Queen's crown? <laughs> queen's crown. Those are two words we could jam together, right? Sure. For Latin. Or we could name it after Queen the Band. Mercurii? Yes. <laughs> I would accept it. <laughs> See, look at this. 
Chess originated in India around the 6th century AD. You just have to say stuff and then and then people they they just they're hungry for knowledge. Wow. And uh and they're here to help. My helpers are incredible. We got uh so 17 they got bored of that gammon and then got bored of Parcheesi and made up chess. Is that what happened? I guess. I don't know. Those kind of all originated from that region. Then. Yeah. We're on this super, super slow build, but uh, but I think it's going to be going to be worth it. This photo is just a little fuzzy, but I figure I could uh, I could probably correct the fuzziness a bit. So. It has no lack of uh, taxonomic description, though. We can go into way too much detail about four coverings from this picture. Uh, if I had 63 more, I would be tied with that one on the YouTube video. And if I had 64 more electron beams, I would have one more than them. So I think you're right. If I had to add electron beams, I would want 64 of them. So mine would be the 65 beam. And I would just do it to, just to have one better, you know. Pacific Plankton is laying down the facts. Yeah, that's what she does. <laughs> that's great. So originally the queen was probably called Furs or Advisor, and Advisor's got to have a direct Latin. So there yeah. You go. yeah, there you go. Was originally called the advisor. I love it. Uh, Vizier, yeah, perfect. And Jans wants to know what's older, Go or chess? Like ancient chess and ancient Go. Del says Go. I mean, <laughs> you got Google. <laughs> uh, in Belgium, they don't have Google. They have something else. Uh, like Google, but... <laughs> What's go? go is a game they play in uh, Japan that's got the little white and black stones, right? And then it's got complicated rules I've never learned because I never learned to play Go. The rules are super simple. The strategy is super complex. Yeah. Uh, I feel like there must be a digital version of Go that I could buy on Steam that would teach me how to play it. And then, yeah, and then we could, uh, we could have Go competitions on Twitch. That would be great. We'll have a Go community that will start. I suspect there is a large Go community. Probably already is, yeah. Could join. Yeah. There's a chess community on Twitch. Got popular for a while, so I feel like the Go community is just right around the corner, you know. Mm-hmm. Commander Shafard said the pores remind them of a pineapple slicer. That's a good idea, too. The ones that you just go, <clears throat> and then you got to mm -hmm. chop mm -hmm. them into pieces. With the, with the coring right in the center. Yeah. I like Mahjong. That's a good game, Sweepy B. It's a fun one. Well, I don't see any consistent number of spokes on the, the pore coverings or anything. Yeah. We're there. All the side uh, four covers. Intricate. That's what I'm gonna call it. And then we'll zoom out and we'll take a picture of it without it being like super in our face. This is what we've been looking at for the last ten minutes, if you're curious. <laughs> <laughs> Only we were looking at it a lot closer. <laughs> it's an Olicasira. We looked at it uh, way up here, actually like way up here, and 
and we took a picture super close. And, uh, and now I'm going to zoom out so that we can tell what the picture came from. And maybe look at some of the whole diatom structure. This is six million years old, right? Yep. So that's a Give six, or take a few hundred thousand. Six million years this thing has been waiting for Twitch to, to take a look at it. And, uh, and I'm bringing it to you right now. Yeah. Some guy named Mark Edlin went out to Nebraska, ripped it from its resting place, and sent it to us. And then uh, I gave it the Midas touch, stuffed it in the machine. <laughs> and then. <laughs> Not before being boiled in uh, hydro hydrogen peroxide. Got to do that. It's had quite the journey. <laughs> you got to do that. Uh, and then you also did some uh, heavy liquid extraction on these, right? Oh, yeah. It was, it was floated up out of water with a sodium polytungstate heavy liquid. There you go. Whole... Risen from the ashes, literally. <laughs> I like it. We could call all of them something after Phoenix as a result. <laughs> so we looked at this little piece right up here when we started, which is the girdle band, and then we saw some of these pores. And then the last picture that I took is actually from somewhere down in here, where you could see the spines and they're overlapping and then basically we we're, were right along this boundary looking down into the little spoke shaped uh, areoli covers that you can see very clearly from this photo as well. Hey Sam Shang, how's it going? Chessex. Oh, who is today's guest? Uh, Mama Bonbon bon wants to know. This is uh, Joseph Mohan, and he's currently working on getting his PhD at the University of Maine. He got his uh, master's degree right here at Indiana State, and as soon as he left, I bought an SEM. <laughs> I, I feel like you bought an SEM because of me. <laughs> <laughs> we were trying to get it before you. But uh, putting out a, a couple papers describing species and having to drive to Indianapolis to use their SEM was probably a good justification, though, right? Right. <laughs> I wrote some grants to cover that, and then shortly thereafter, we got this thing funded. And then uh, shortly after Joe left, we actually got the instrument. So uh, it's been here the whole time since he's been gone, basically probably would have enjoyed it <laughs> probably <laughs> but we have SCMs here it's true I'm looking for that um, book that describes pore coverings oh boy it's the the one in Russian that's got a yellow cover it's, I have a digital copy but I can never remember the name of it it's uh, Harwood and Nikolaev that you're thinking That's, of. Yep. Or okay. Nikolaev and Harwood, I think, maybe, because it's probably in that order. Um, I met that guy. He's actually, I think he's passed away now, but um, he, because, you know, Harwood's from Nebraska, where I did my PhD. Mm -hmm. He's, uh, he would come visit, like, once a year, and then they would just go get drunk and dream up crazy stuff. So. That sounds like science. Yeah. In some settings. <laughs> yeah. He was a he was a fun guy. Maybe he's still around, I don't know. I get the sense that he isn't, but Harwood's still around. <laughs> 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 or at least nobody said anything about him disappearing. So <laughs> Alright, I need to turn my beam intensity back up to ten. And uh, then we can start scouting around a bit more. So all the stuff that you're seeing here uh, that doesn't have a distinct geometric shape is ash. And this thing is a, a chrysophyte stomatocyst right here. And it's a really look, 
cool looking one, so I'm going to take a picture of it. And unlike all the other ones that we saw, this one actually has its aperture pointed upward at us. And chrysophytes are not diatoms, but they are the next closest thing to a diatom, actually, um, in a similar category, way up at the top of the um, at the top of their possible relationships, but uh, one of the closest things to them, technically. And. Uh, Probably there's, if we get bored of describing diatoms from this, we probably could spend uh, a couple of years describing uh, chrysophytes as well. Because I doubt anybody's looked at the chrysophytes here and put names on these things or numbers or whatever they're going to do. <laughs> yeah, numbers. But I could look them up and see. That would be fun. So this is the opening the organism uh, comes out of, emerges from when it's done hibernating, basically. It's not hibernation, but it's similar. And seven, speed seven. Let me fix that. Would retail store-bought diatomaceous earth appear this pristine under the SEM? Uh, some of it would, yes. And the pristine quality, it'd probably be a little more broken up, but the pristine quality of the uh, materials that we're looking at are that way because there's a lot of silica in the surrounding environment. In this case, it's ash. But in any diatomite, there's also a lot of silica, and it means that, that it acts as a buffer. Um, the silica gets dissolved into the water, and then if there's a lot of silica already in the water, it makes it harder to dissolve the silica. So, um, and most groundwater already has a bunch of silica in it, so you don't need to add a lot of silica to it to make it to the point where diatoms don't dissolve very well, but it would have to stay that way for a long time. So um, I would say that if you went to the hardware store and you bought some diatomaceous earth, because I have some in my house, and you sprinkle it on an SEM, you'd still see pretty good detail. It might not be quite as good as what we're seeing here, um, but in many cases it would be, and then you just have a lot more broken fragments. Otherwise, it would be basically the same. There's probably also a lot of variability depending on what deposit they got it out of. And also true, yeah. Because that could, that could have a huge range of ages. Samsung, I woke up at, uh, I went to bed at 2.30 and I checked the sky to see if we could get any of the lunar eclipse here. And all I could see was like silvery, silvery clouds with like a, a moon way behind it that I couldn't actually see the shape of the moon or its position, but it was like somewhere in this part of the sky. And I was like, yep, that's not gonna clear up by six. And when I got up uh, at nine or eight or eight o'clock or whatever, a chrysophytes attack yeah um uh it was raining so i just went ahead and figured i didn't miss anything but uh the last lunar eclipse i was in arizona and uh it happened right um you know we were dead center in the middle of it in the middle of the sky and i captured the entire thing and uh I, the only difference between now and then is I have a bigger lens, so you know I could get a nicer shot of it. But uh, I'm not missing it. It'll happen again. Lunar eclipses are, you know, relatively common. Solar eclipses a little harder to catch, but I've been streaming for 54 minutes. Uh, yeah, that's it. It wouldn't have been at the apex of the eclipse even if we could see it here. So I probably just missed it as well, Commander. Or maybe even less of it than that. So I was like, eh, I could have seen a little bit of penumbral sort of position of it, but that's it. Let's see. Uh, not in gate wants to know are you more surprised by small structures like spines on diatoms or large structures like animal bones persisting as fossils for so long 
And Joe's a good person to ask this question to because he did his undergraduate degree looking at fossilized bone material, or not actual bones, but more fossil material uh, from larger organisms, right? Uh, yeah, certainly ones you could pick up with your hands. <laughs> um, those were Devonian reef deposits, a lot of brachiopods and things like that. Um, I think I'm I'm more surprised by the the larger things getting preserved, uh, just because they're they're so yummy, like. There's so many more things that would eat an animal laying on the landscape. Uh, diatoms. And these little spines. They get eaten occasionally, but like 4% of them might get eaten in a year, which is pretty low. Um, and I, I have, you know, I've been to some dinosaur digs uh, and there there's people that spend like a couple years digging up one bone <laughs> so so to me that's maybe a bit more impressive in terms of, of preservation and actually time to to dig those up whereas diatoms it's like smash and grab you you can grab a you know a few hundred thousand diatoms in one sample at least <laughs> yeah if it's a diatomite you're probably closer to trillions in a sample maybe more uh they're probably in billions per cubic centimeter so uh i would actually agree with joe in that i think it's a much less likely not the preservation so i actually am not surprised that bones preserve but i would actually argue that the diatoms live in a basin by definition. They live in a place where, uh, where they get buried as soon as they die because lakes are essentially just basins and oceans are basins. And for sediments that accumulate on the landscape, if you live in a basin, there's a pretty good chance you're gonna get buried in the basin you live in. Uh, whereas if you're coming from the That's land surface, is it though? Yeah, there's a room at Porchilla over uh, at like nine o'clock. I thought. I'm gonna say cycloteloid. Yeah. And the reason I would draw that distinction is these are, I think, areoli on the valve face. You think so? Those are holes. Right there? Mm. Yeah? Those are holes to me. Yeah, let's see. Uh, <laughs> and I otherwise would agree with you, but I feel like those are all holes on the valve face. And uh, Cyclotella should not have holes on the valve face. Well, they, if they're full to Portula, that's okay. They are not. No. Nope. Those are... Not central photoportula, but in my opinion, probably areoli. Hang on a second. Oh, we're at seven. It's about as good as our picture can get for that. Okay. But they definitely look like areoli to me. Yeah, there's really not much structure there. There's definitely not satellite pores or any of that other stuff. So... Uh, Some somewhere between Cyclotella and Fascinorbis, then. <laughs> Correct. That is where I would put them as a as a group. And these pore covers are actually very similar to uh, the Fascinorbis pore covers on the mantle photo portula. Fascinella. Oh, I can't wait till my genus name becomes a. Uh, a genus prefix <laughs> term that people copy for making other similar genera. Cyclo Orbis. I feel like that's self-defeating, though. 
That's why I went with Fasinorbis, actually. I wanted to yeah, sort of it's build its own. Very, very novel. Build its Stands own. Stands on its own. <laughs> yeah, as like a, not like those other things that you're thinking about. Mm-hmm. So, although I did have, a, I did try the first time uh, that I came up, was working on coming up with a name for it. Uh, the, my first suggestion was Cycloprimus, which I liked because I thought they were like early cycloteloid things. Hmm. But uh, and Andy, how Ol- old is Cyclotella though? Cyclotella is older. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, Cyclotella would be the the parent for this whole, or if they're even related directly, but they'd have sure. a common ancestor or whatever. That's Cyclotella would be the the older group. But uh, Andy did not like that. It, although, let me rephrase that a bit Andy <laughs> liked the idea that uh, that we had Primus in the name <laughs> yeah he, he's a Primus fan and he was uh, supportive of the idea of having Primus in the name but he did not like the Cyclo part <laughs> as he said it's too much like Cyclotella and I said, okay, well, we'll just come up with our own name for it. And uh, the funny part about that name is, um, the Fasinorbis name, is that uh, it, I, I picked it because Andy started saying that our, our diatom was like a curse because we couldn't find a place to put it Right, just when they thought they had this uh, this nice, neat taxonomy for this group, you throw something right in the middle of two. <laughs> exactly. So <laughs> he, he started uh, referring to it as, as being similar to a curse. And uh, so I went to, to the Latin uh, vocabulary, and I tried to find something that would be used to ward off curses right like and, a ward yeah like a ward <laughs> and uh and i came up with a charm and so a charm like the root word for charm that would be used to you know get get curses to go away and so fascinorbus actually means like charming but i had a double meaning for it one was nice. one was for everybody else and one was for andy <laughs> <laughs> That was the, uh, my hidden joke was just for Andy. Uh, and then he liked the name and, and Mark liked the name. So we went with it. So, yeah, that's great. Uh, it's a, it's, you know, it's a name. So I haven't even looked at chat in a while, and I feel like I'm ignoring them by accident. What are some significant differences from six million year old fossils compared to recent water samples you found? Uh, kind of what we're talking about. <laughs> uh, we we have these features that define different groups of diatoms and uh, some scientists, Andy, that, who Jeffrey was talking to or talking about, um, worked on separating these groups for quite a while and then, uh, you know, working with modern samples. And then we go back and look at fossils and say, well, what about this? And it doesn't really fit anywhere. Um, but like the overall shape, the overall size, those are rather similar. Yeah. But it's like, it's like you know, in the modern era, you're allowed to put holes here. If you put a, a room of Portula over here, you're allowed to put a Fulta Portula over there. 
Um, but then you go back in time and things don't follow the rules anymore. <laughs> yeah, they made the rules based on, for the genus names, based on modern material. And then, uh, oopsie, forgot to look at the fossil material to see what it was looking like. <laughs> and uh, I, I think they actually looked at the fossil material. Um, they just didn't realize they would orphan so many things. So mm. there's a lot of <laughs> orphaning that went on. And these are definitely areoli. You can see the cribra just barely in here. You can see the little cribra holes. Mm -hmm. And they are single holes. So those are definitely areoli. And the combination of areoli and arimaportula on the costi means it can't be cyclotella and it can't be fascinorbus and it can't, well, whatever. It can't be, it can be fascinorbus, but it can't be uh, uh, lindavia. So this is a feature of lindavia but the rim of Portula position would be have to be on the valve face somewhere or close to it, and it is not. So we're in a get stuck in this like loop of things that don't quite work perfectly. It could be Fascinorbus, though. I'll just call them cycloteloids for now. A stricter is Fascinorbus about having a, a full to Portula on every costi. Yeah. <laughs> it's important that we uh, we follow the rules that I laid down for what Fascinorbus is, <laughs> whatever those are. Uh, but I think this is part of what, when Mark and I were looking at the rest of these things that were kind of similar <laughs> to Fascinorbus, trying to figure out whether they actually belong there or not. Yeah. Uh, well, you can always revise the right. the understanding as if you know if we're not convinced it's a new genus then it's about the how genus. strict does it need to be and i would actually argue the one part that uh, most of these things have that fascinorbus i thought was different than that was probably a barricade for for lumping them into fascinorbus and not putting them in their own genus to me the thing that probably sold it the best is the the simple versus complex areoli alveolar chambers sorry alveolar chambers so whether they have like a single opening, simple single opening, or whether they have an opening that has like double costy with forks and other things in there, like Lindavia, like. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, that's a feature that we need to like look closely at and figure out, do we want to lump stuff into Fasnorbus if it doesn't have a s similar chamber structure? Um, in part because I think ultimately we're going to end up back there eventually when people go to re-split things apart. That is Staracyrella. <laughs> so one of the things we... I made a set of seven stubs of the Ashfall stuff as well. So um, one of the things that we'll be able to do also is to look through those a little bit more carefully later next time whatever <laughs> we won't we won't even be able to look through all the seven stubs that i have here probably today um and we could try but i don't think we'll get more than two or three of them cleared and then probably on friday i'll just spend some time on the scm digging through these samples and seeing if i can find any of those little weird little blessed syra like things they seem pretty rare, but uh, how rare is the question? I think you'd have to be zoomed in pretty close. Like, I might have to scan through the sample right here at like a 20, or 20 millimeter scale bar or something where you could actually kind of see. Because I think they were only, it was only like 5 microns. Like five micron, 20 micron scale bar width. This is a real tedious uh, slog to go through the whole slide at this scale, though. <laughs> Probably not best for Twitch. Although, if we find it, it will be amazing. Let's see if we can find anything of the any of the bigger things in here. I zoomed out a little, I can see something up here that's pretty big. 
These are all ash pieces, these things, but this little round guy isn't. Again, that's got uh, areoli on the valve face. You can see them here for the Kerbera. So this is like what we were just looking at. It's hard to get them in focus though. Lumpy. What is this? It's a Cindella. Hello. It's uh. Hmm. It's got a, uh, what is this thing called? Uh, it's a stigma, but it's got a really interesting stigma. Uh, that's cool. Let's see what I can do. Hmm, that helped. It really helps when you put stuff in focus. Let's see, I thought I saw... I uh, can't really see it. Maybe I saw some structure in there, but I don't really see it now. It's definitely a Cymbella, and that's its stigma. This is the Rafi. And somebody stuck an Olicacera on the edge of it, <laughs> so I can't see the ends. <laughs> <laughs> Who would do such a thing? Uh, it looks like the end is broken off anyways. <laughs> yeah. This is the exciting part anyhow. Both ends are kind of broken off. At least based on what I can see here, it's a Cymbella though. It's got some weird pore coverings. Ooh, we got some questions. Is there such a thing as disease for diatoms? Yeah, they get uh, fungal infections. Mm -hmm. That's pretty common. Yeah. Um, and then do you think a diatom is capable of making a sound or noise? I suppose if they bump into each other, they would make a little bit of a sound. But... I mean, when they crawl around, they probably are making a sound of some type. Some kind of slimy... <laughs> like a slug? Noise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like whatever noise a slug makes. <laughs> In the movies, it would sound uh, like a wet mop. <laughs> exactly. Going across the floor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a good question though I always imagine them just screaming the whole time you know in terror as I dunk them in acid and hydrogen peroxide <laughs> not like cicadas no <laughs> silent screams exactly pacific uh they're all just screaming. Please put me back in the sun. <laughs> uh, we'll ask that question to Mark if he shows up. If he, he'll come in from the field, he'll be like, all right, I'm ready. Here's a question for you, Mark. What's okay. the sound of one diatom clapping? Exactly. <laughs> Not too different in the screaming all the time or in the fungal and viruses. They get bacteria too, but uh, some of them do it on purpose. Like uh, Ropolodia. Yeah. Those are cyanobacteria. Yeah, that's a pretty cool. Uh, I'm not. I'm not quite sure you'd call it a symbiont, but 
Yeah, they're endosymbionts. The, uh, the bacteria gets some protection from the diatom, and the diatom gets some nitrogen from the nitrogen fixation. Protection, imprisoned, same thing. I mean, <laughs> it's for their protection. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> it's for your safety. That's right. Come with us. <laughs> That's quite the stigma. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. It's in the right place, so that's all I can say about it. <laughs> that's where it goes with the, the, like the with the symbellas. So, yeah. that's a symbella. Symbella. Stigma. Can they choose to leave? I think that's in reference to the bacteria. No. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think they have a whole lot of say in what happens after they get put in there. Ooh. That's one of those mystery ones. Mm -hmm. Lumpy. Yup. Lumpy undulate. very small yeah i think this is what i tossed in in the, the i don't know part of the poster that i put together or the, the the working taxonomy what is the poster for oh just for us i was gonna put it on google drive for us to to move around um just to mentally sort things out but the file's too big because these are all tiff images so Google didn't like it. Some jerk made the files too big. <laughs> too, your pictures are too good. <laughs> I'll I'll go through and convert them to JPEG and then put that on. Just so we have something to to work on collaboratively and mess around with the the taxonomy. Yeah, I was sort of curious if there was going to be some sort of presentation. That's why I was asking. Is this, for, um, is this for like a science meeting or like for just uh, just to put it together? Oh, I, yeah, maybe I'll present it at the next uh, diatoms meeting. But um, there'll be some sort of uh, outreach at the Ashfall site. Oh, cool. Um, probably a, a combination of poster and 3D models and... Uh, whatever else they are interested down there. Getting some more of my SEM images at another park. That's what exactly. That's my plan. So that that's in the works. Um, Mark probably knows more okay. than me on that. Um, but I just thought it would be nice to put something together to start uh, you know, sort of putting working names on things at so, the very least. If you look at this, uh, oh, let me go to this one. If you look at this, uh, these little, not for you, Joe, for people out there, the, uh, the ends of these, there's this little bit of silica in tiny circles right here. And uh, that's where the spines were attached at some time in the past. And um, they broke off. So there used to be spines that went around here. Uh, they break off pretty easily, apparently. I think this one had kind of nubs. Yeah. I think we have another sample. They're like they're like very short and and almost hemispherical. Yeah. And then you can see Mantiphota portula every other. Every other costi. There's one. There's one. There's one. There's one. Here's one. And if it's like the other diatom that we saw, the rim of Portula should be down here. I'm just guessing. This is where this is the axis, right? So rim of Portula should be like Oh. Probably on this piece that's broken off. <laughs> I don't see a rim of Portula. 
Mantha Flora Portula. Yeah, it's, it was probably in one of these that are broken. Just throw random numbers on. My mm -hmm. uh, my naming convention is like, uh, I don't know, it's cycloteloid, so I don't want it to overwrite any of the other cycloteloids I have. So I just start putting numbers on, and I don't remember what the last number I used was, so. Ooh. There's some of the nubs. This one's yeah. a bigger one. And it also has this nubs on the uh, colliculate part here. And there's some, some examples of some areoli that are in here among these. Pretty sure they're areoli. That one's a lot bigger. I think it's the same species. So little nub-shaped spines all the way around. Uh, although... I, th I think your full of portula distribution is either changes or it's different. Yeah, that's <laughs> every costi. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they're a bit higher up on the... Yeah. The well, not that that is too... Indicative. Yeah, maybe it's a different species. I will accept your argument that it's probably a different species based on the Manta Photoportula. It's closely related. Seven. It's gonna look good. Hey, Mean Machine Rex, how's it going? Two down, 421 national parks to go. Well, I got the monuments I gotta worry about too. So, parks and monuments. And these are state parks, right? So. Does Grove have its own state park around it or something? What's there? Have you ever been there? I've never been there. Okay. Yeah. This no, is... I uh, I was, you know, I have tried to go to the diatom school at Lakeside Lab, I think four times now, <laughs> and. Uh, Last year didn't happen, and I think this year they're doing something virtually. So they are. Maybe next year. You think you're going to learn something new by going? <laughs> uh, at this point, I think Mark wants me to come and teach a bit about it. <laughs> you're going to be a TA. Maybe just... Uh, like a one week visiting oh, research, okay. something like that. Yeah. But that was the plan for this summer, but it's not, I don't think it's happening. So we'll see. It's the Lakeside Lab, Okoboji, uh, Diatom taxonomy class. It's taught by Mark and Sylvia Lee. Sylvia Lee made that, uh, this Costella pillow thing that you were pointing at uh, to me the other day, Pacific, which I, I think I shared it before. So, and Sylvia's, I'm friends with Sylvia, so. Uh, I've seen her knitting on Facebook quite a bit, so. It's evolution, hello. Welcome in. We're looking at fossil diatoms that are six million plus or minus a couple hundred thousand years old. 
from Nebraska. It used to be a Nebraskan diatom. Yeah, just six million. Uh, we've looked at 10 million, and I think I had some older stuff in here before. But uh, I've got a bunch of, yeah, no biggie. Uh, you know, six million, that's baby years in fossil land. This is Cyclotoid, Cy Cyclotoid 6, <laughs> cleverly named. I don't know. Uh, and we're looking at it on a scanning electron microscope because it's Wednesday and Wednesdays and Saturday, Wednesdays and uh, Mondays now, that's what I do. Almost, almost fell into my old uh, mode of saying Wednesdays and Saturdays. But, uh, ooh. We can kind of look into this one. Mm, yeah, maybe we'll get that chamber structure. Mm, not too sold on that, actually. It's too dark. This one is more like mini guinea looking. There's the normal portula, though. Mm -hmm. I need to fix it. It needs fixing. Well, it's behaving taxonomically. Is it though? I guess maybe it is. Yeah, I think we can call this one Cyclotella. Pretty convincing. Yeah. I don't know. Look at these things. This could be Arioli. Proto Arioli. <laughs> They're not the. Uh... They're not not aerially. <laughs> I don't know if that means that they are aerially. The uh, the image is making me mad though. I need to fix it. It's like a little blurry. I need to find something I can stigmate against that's the that's flat and circular. Let's see what we can find. This will be easy, it's in the middle. Plus I think there's more of them. What the heck is that? <laughs> oh, it's a piece of tetracyclus. Mm -hmm. It's got round stuff on it. It's flat enough, but we can try. Better. Man, that thing is really like that undulation is really sharp. The 
weird looking diatom. I think we've seen this one before. Yeah, it's just it's got a really like, like really sharp undulation. Yeah, I think we're at this, probably the smaller end of this species. You can see there's the Rumor Portula opening. I think it's the same as the one we've yeah. been seeing. It's just, it's kind of a weirdo, so I thought I would get a picture of it. Yeah, no, it's good. Weirdo is a scientific term. Yeah. Yeah. I think this is this one is slightly football shaped as opposed to circular. And we're just looking at it tipped this one. Yeah, it's a little bit. The other straight on images we have with this one, it's slightly football shaped. Like a rugby ball rather than a football. Large is the file of the entire scanned sample. Uh, like when we take a picture, it's about two or three megabytes, usually somewhere between two and four megabytes. Pretty small. Um, how large is the area? I don't know what you mean by that question. You should switch to Tuesday and Thursday regularly. Yeah, that would be good. Then you wouldn't be you wouldn't be struggling to like. You know, you wouldn't be conflicting with Dell. The problem then is that you got nobody to raid on Tuesdays, so we'll have to find somebody to like, you know, get you to that place to go after you're done. Pacific. We talked to OpenSet into doing it, maybe. There's no higher resolution than this. Uh, well, I mean, there's higher resolution microscopes than this one. There is. Um, I don't have one that goes any better than this, though. <laughs> if I found microplastics in a six million year old sample, I would know that it was contamination. So. Yeah, Orange Boy, uh, they find microplastics in the air. They found microplastics in, they did a study where they looked at like the feces of s some random number of people, like eight or nine random people, and every one of them had plastic in their feces. And also they found plastic in the guts of mosquito, you know, mosquitoes. It's, uh, it's unavoidable. And, you know, the microplastics are uh, an issue and then there's the ultra microplastics, which are, you know, basically we can't even see them on this SEM very easily. And uh, they're like a whole nother class of problems that we have. So it's true. Best thing you can do is try to reduce your use of single use plastics to the best of your ability. How's your dog doing? Uh, he's sleeping. Oh. <laughs> that sounds like we, that's that's a good time. He's he's a big sleeper. Yeah. Yeah. We we go for a little run almost every day, and then uh, now that it's hot out, we go swimming in the river probably every other day. 
when you say we go swimming, do you jump into the river as well? Uh, occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> he that's... swims every other day. Yeah, that's good. As long as the yeah, river is slowly flowing. Uh, we got into some swift water today. That was a first for him. But he swam up upstream a little ways in a bit of a current. Got his little fetching stick and brought it back cool. so he did his job <laughs> that looks like a piece of a chrysophyte yeah I think that's what that is a broken chrysophyte chrysophyte number 327 <laughs> Exactly. Oh, here's an actual chrysophyte, I think. Yeah. Some sort of structure on it. Uh... What were you ooing? Uh, uh, there's something towards the bottom of the screen looked like a circle with a big undulate face. Oh, yeah. This one? Yeah. This one here? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. Yep, it does. I think it's the same thing, the little one. It's really small now. Yeah. Though this one didn't get so extremely undulate at its smaller size. Do you want to make bets on whether Mark makes it? Uh, hmm. <laughs> Field work in Minnesota. I bet he will be in the field longer than we usually think, right? <laughs> Probably. He hasn't sent any messages saying he'll be here soon. He just said he was going to be late. He also said a little late, which I feel like we've already passed the boundary for little late. <laughs> He's a lot late at this point. Two hours late. Eh, no big deal. I mean, whatever. That's his loss for not hanging out. Fake chrysophytes. Can't stand them. Oh man, I had a donut this morning. So, uh, it does look a little bit like a donut. I had uh, uh, an event with my daughter where we ate donuts and uh, at, the, at the elementary school. And, uh, it was like all the dads and their, their kids were there. The kids were already there. The dads came and then we, we hung out in the cafeteria and, uh, they had a donut 
on a, a disposable plate. One for each, the kid and the dad. And then the kids read poetry at us. Poetry that they had written, or I think it would have been like better if they had Edgar written Allan it. Poe. Or... <laughs> it also would have been better if it was Edgar Allan Poe, or like I really <laughs> would have. Little kids reading Edgar Allan Poe could be pretty interesting. I really would have liked to have like the kids read some <laughs> Sylvia Plath. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> like just just straight up the darkest Sylvia Plath poetry they could find would have been great. But uh, instead, it was some little weird poem about, you know, how great dads are or something. Uh, I see. Uh, it was supposed to be a stand-in for Father's Day uh, because we don't... They're going to be done with school this week. And, uh. Uh, and they did a Mother's Day one, and I felt like maybe they were just trying to appease the fathers so that they also had a day with... Uh, with kids and they had muffins with moms and donuts with dads so um you know it was fine it was just a glazed donut but but was it a square donut it was a square donut yeah of course how did i know <laughs> uh because it's Terre Haute, i guess it's um, the only place i've ever seen square donuts well that's that's their thing you know, the uh, Pacific said she was going to make donuts maybe today for her family. I don't know if she actually made them or not. She was threatening to when I said I was eating donuts. She was like, oh, donuts sound good. <laughs> but I probably would have liked the cake donut better. Generally speaking, donuts are they're too too sweet for me. So we have this donut shop about forty five minutes north of us. That For, makes forty five minutes north of you. Oh, it's it's worth it. They make the best blueberry donuts I've ever had. Cake donuts, blueberry. Those are the best. What do you mean, cake donut? Uh, like, uh, um, there's sort of yeast-based donuts and cake-based donuts. The cake ones are more like cake, and they usually have a glaze, or sometimes people will put, like, frosting or something or icing on them. Uh, but the, they differ from, like, you know, like a, a glazed donut usually. Like, the true glazed donuts are yeast-based they rise and they're puffy in the middle instead of cakey in the middle all right i'm gonna say these are cake donuts then yeah based on that but so, they're fantastic and it, you definitely... know um donut holes right you know what a donut hole is right you make a donut and you take the center out but the donut holes are usually like cake donuts <laughs> that's usually a yeah cake, cake, oh okay cake donut material is cake like Oh man, I'm getting hounded on my carbon footprint for driving 45 minutes to get donuts. <laughs> well, uh, you, they don't know. Maybe you've got an electric vehicle. I don't have an electric vehicle, but I did just see that F-150 is going to be electric. I'm definitely going to get one. Yeah. I don't even have a car, actually. You have to have, have somebody a, drive you to the donut place? I have a bike. You bike? But it's a, it's a halfway point to... Um, to Baxter State Park to go oh. climb in the mountains. Yeah, Baxter's great. So it's like a good, we're going to stop, we're going to take the slightly longer way and stop for breakfast. Yeah. Baxter's a great state park. I really liked going up there. Except for the mosquitoes. The mosquitoes are pretty wants ridiculous. To know if there's bike trails around Indianapolis. I have no idea. I'm in Maine. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see. Are there bike trails around Indianapolis? Yes. There's bike trails that go right through Indianapolis. There's like a, uh, the White River or something goes right through Indianapolis. And then, uh, when I want to bike, I just bike, uh, I just bike into work. 
and back. There's a bike trail that goes basically straight to my house from from school. So more or less. Yeah. So and then I can also bike out to like Hawthorne Park, do a little birding or or sample the lake. There's a pretty good uh mountain bike area yeah. south of Terre Haute. The Griffith bike uh park. That's it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, they built that uh I don't know. You must have been here when they built it. Yeah, it wasn't there the first year I was there. It yeah. was there the second year. Those are old... Uh, the areas that, that are there, they were old mine lands. Mm-hmm. Um, that they, so there's like the old mine sites and stuff are there, but they're hidden away. This is uh, got some weird-looking spines. They're, they're really just nubs, aren't they? Yeah funny little and this huh. one is really colliculate like the middle part it's very yeah. colliculate looking is that a Ruma Portula or two oh or a bunch on the valve face these uh, I don't see your marker oh sorry uh, <laughs> these? I doubt it. I I don't know what those are, but I don't think they're Rima Portula. That one is a candidate. Up but, at like twelve o'clock. Yeah. Oh, uh, these are Manta Photo Portula. There's a bunch right of on them. the costy like that. Yep. Okay. Uh, I would, if I would guess where the room of Portugal is, I would guess here, because again, it'd be like long axis of the transverse undulation. And I usually see it on the downward depression side. I don't know if that's always the case, but it's a mystery. Aha! Uh-huh. Nope. Well. Yeah, I think that's a room of Portugal. See, these are out a little farther. Yeah, it's a little raised, a little bigger. It's a little bigger and a little closer to the middle. And it's in the right place, so. That's where I would have expected to find it. My confirmation bias has been confirmed. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Uh, I saw another one while we were zoomed out. Oh, I think we have from one of the last sessions a internal view of this guy with the Rima Portula down in that same. Well, it's, it's offset, but in that general region, yeah. Yeah. Something in that Fascinella group. <laughs> oh, you've already. You're already going with Fascinella. Well, we know it's ridiculous and won't stick, so I feel like I can use it liberally. <laughs> okay. It's, it's a working name. It's good. Uh, there was some uh, name I saw on a pizza shop wall in Minneapolis, and I thought, oh, I'm going to use that as the next uh, diatom name. On a pizza shop? Yeah, I can't remember what it, the, hang on, it's like a, it's like a masks that they use. I can't remember what they were. It sounded just like a diatom name, but we looked it up and it's like uh, old wooden masks. They used to be called this, uh, I think in Italy. Hmm. Oh, look at that. It's just like one little, just some one little horn on it. This is the same little guy with the transverse undulation. Do you think we have one species with transverse undulation or two? I think there's at least two. Yeah. Just there's the one with the the really well defined central area that's more flat and crusty, and then there's the one that um, yeah, the one we were just looking at. Crusty. Oh, that's nice. Crusty. Calliculate. <laughs> <laughs> like crusty. <laughs> well, you were talking about pizza, so I got to crust. I see. It's my fault. <laughs> I got it. All my fault. 
Oh, there's a Rimathorchula in the right spot. Close anyway. This one you can't actually see through to the Is your is your Twitch channel a nod to massive attack? <laughs> I wish it was. <laughs> uh no. But I do like Massive Attack. Uh, it's a uh, it's a nod to the old movies where uh, monsters attacked, and uh, they would make random things like grow really big and then attack a city. Oh yeah, giant ant. Right. More like Mars attacks, exactly. <laughs> In the vein of Mars attacks. Compared with a hair, how big is this one? Well, what is a hair? A hundred microns thick? Mm hmm And this is about ten? Uh, this one is... Well, this one's a little bigger than ten. It's probably more like... Yeah. But she could put ten of these on a hair. Fifteen, yeah. Or I guess if you want to round the hair, you could put thirty-one. <laughs> If you could bedazzle your hair with these. You probably do if they're in a little bit in your tap water, right? <laughs> Depending on your drip. Mine comes from a well, so probably not. <laughs> we uh, have looked at human hairs in the SEM before. We also looked for Demodex uh, growing on human hairs. We've had some of my beard hair in there. Some of my <laughs> eyebrow hair. On purpose? <laughs> yeah, yeah, on purpose. We were looking yeah. for the little mites, and uh, we never found any on me. Is there a legend of somebody with a golden beard? I feel like Ooh. that's probably Ooh. something in, something out of like Norse mythology. We can make one up. Dwarves from the Lord of the Rings. Yeah, I don't remember having, anybody having a beard made of gold, but... Uh, we got people that can Google, so <laughs> we'll see what somebody comes up with. Golden beard. It doesn't even sound like, I don't even think there's a pirate named that way. There's like a red beard and a black beard and a blue beard. Gold, gold beard when gold, diatoms attack. Gold beard the pirate. <laughs> Mine's turning into white beard though, so. <laughs> Perfect. That's a good one. Yeah. Let's go snoop around. See what's on stub five. I feel like we're definitely overlooking some little things, always. A little internal view of a little tiny one.
you know, same thing. And to photo portula on the end of every row. Nubby spines. Mm -hmm. Is that uh, rosathidium like thing? I'm not sure what this is. Oh, I saw one of these the other day and I didn't know what it was. And I thought maybe it was a, just a chrysophyte. Looked like a ball of cauliflower. Hmm. Pollen? Hmm, it doesn't look like it's soft. It's always totally spherical. Yeah. So. Actually, pollen shouldn't have floated in the heavy liquid. Good point. Did you do like a really light liquid and then a really heavy liquid? So you have multiple layers or did you just do two? No, I just put it in the, the sodium polytungstate. So everything floated to the top. And then pipetted off. The little one. And the portula. Like spines optional. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it seems like it. Explain floated in the heavy liquid. Uh, so these samples have very few diatoms per gram of sediment in them, which makes it a bit of a pain when you're looking for diatoms. So in order to concentrate them, I added sodium polytungstate, which is a pretty inert substance that dissolves in water easily, which will raise the density of water. And if you raise it just slightly above the density of silica, and then put it in a centrifuge for a little while. The diatoms and other things that are made of silica will float to the top of the centrifuge tube, and then you can pipette them off. So it's used a lot in pollen separation and a little bit in diatom separation, and then um, quite a bit for phytoliths. So anything that you don't want to use nasty chemicals on because I don't want to use nasty chemicals. Um, yeah, you can use sodium polytungstate. Chad does the same thing with his phyllis and he uses some uh, chromium something or other. I don't remember what he, he uses instead of uh, SPT, but hmm. he was uh, he was telling me he likes it a little bit better for the phytolist for some reason. I don't remember what his rationale was, but also, hello, open set. If you're still hanging out here, I didn't notice you were in the channel. Open set uh, streams from the light microscope and then plays keyboards and synthesizers at the same time. Oh man, we gotta step up our game. <laughs> and uh, and then he also uses the OBS software, which is the tool that we use to broadcast. But he outputs it as a virtual camera and then modifies all of it, puts it back in. So he has like mirror things and kaleidoscope-like views of things, and then he's got his music going. And he's got uh, kangaroos and cats and you name it. Chaos, yeah. And then uh, you can ask some questions about math at the same time. So there's that. It's worth a follow. That's what I'm saying. And last night we were hanging out with Pacific Plankton Stream. And uh, 
we were looking for somebody to raid and then we just raided somebody and uh, and then open set showed up right after that so we could have raided open set but who starts streaming at 2 30 in the morning open set come on that's ridiculous you can't even claim you like you're on Pacific time. <laughs> People ask you math questions with a PhD. <laughs> well, the only people who ask me about diatom questions usually have a diatom PhD too. The rest of the people want to know what kind of computer I'm using or uh, engineering questions about the SEM. <laughs> Stump the open set. We should look for like, uh, we should get the boring math professor in there to ask you some math questions. I'm sure he could ask you some tough ones. What else do we got to look at? I forget which direction I was going when I found that one. One nice thing about uh, only looking around things all afternoon is I don't have to rotate the uh, the stage very much. <laughs> Just go ahead and take the picture. Let's take a look at these guys. I wonder if it's got spiders. Is that you just rotate the stage to get a better alignment on a on a pen eight? Yeah. So I can That's get maximum size. Such a funny use of that feature. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Those are different than the other ones. <laughs> yeah. These are their little Japanese sons. puzzle pieces, but these ones are little knobs. Oh, we've got our work cut out for us sorting through these. Yeah. Which is a good thing. Yeah. This is uh I feel like there's a whole this is a whole can of worms. <laughs> <laughs> All of it. <laughs> like everything we find, I'm like, oh boy. That's uh that's a thing. Mm -hmm. This one is similar to the one I regularly see in Idaho uh, from the Idaho Geological Survey samples. I see this is how it's sort of a, the spine ends are a little different, but this structure is pretty common for those where you have a sort of a wheel shape and then you have a, a solid circle in the center like this. Um, and the, the pores are sort of squarish, rounded squares. Mm -hmm. It's pretty normal for that uh, type of image mm. before. You, uh, what do you call them? 
Uh, I think it's Alakasera Tempier was the close temp temp temperi or something like that was the closest thing I could find to it. Um, mm -hmm. And I wasn't positive that it was the right name because the spines on those were pointed. I think. Um, so I just call them spider webs. They got little spider webs inside. Are there any architectural students in here? It's a good question. Uh, Biobambicry is a cool idea. And they do, um, they did look very closely at diatoms uh, and some of the structures that they built and compared them with some of the structures that humans built. And um, some of them have even have names like buttress, like they look like a buttress from human built buttresses. Uh, so the, the name of some of the parts even kind of is described using archaeological, ar sorry, architectural terms. Yeah, like flying buttresses. This object is a diatom. Uh, that's a Olicosyra. Yeah. The genus is easy, uh, unless we wanted to get fussy about uh, Alveolar four and things like that. Swimming <laughs> buttress. Floating, floating buttress. Uh, the pictures in the lower right corner are from this SEM, and then those come from. It's just IG. Uh, my Instagram account. Oh, I won. Uh, what I do is take the images and then I colorize them and then post them to Instagram. So um, the the uh, SEM lab has an Instagram and then uh, I have my own Instagram if you're interested in like seeing pictures of birds or uh, whatever else I take pictures of, dragonflies, damselflies, insects, stars, the moon. Uh, and a lot of those are out of the Pacific Ocean, right? A lot of the ones floating through that. Some section. of them, so many of them are because uh, Pacific Plankton, who's here in the, the, as moderator, sends me materials from San Francisco Bay. So um, if they're not from projects that I'm actively working on, they're probably things that she sent me. And then, uh, and then I sl slap some color onto them. Uh, effectively. These are actually kind of interesting to me. Again, they have some They're not perfectly spider webs. They have some sort of crossbars in here. Hiding in here. I can't quite focus on because they're just a little too small and my stigmation is just a little bit off again. Yeah, they do seem like... Uh... Oh. Getting close. Yeah. That's not bad. <laughs> not bad, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Still makes me mad. It's, I could do better, uh, but I need I need to find uh, something that's slightly better. These are close to being the right uh, shapes and sizes for me to fix the stigmation, but you can see they have crossbars coming around. All of them do. Pretty consistently, yeah. Yeah.
How old are the uh, Idaho deposits that have something similar to this? Ten million. Ten. So not not too far off. No. I mean, what's <laughs> what's four million years? Cl- closer to ten million than it is to today. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Barely. <laughs> uh, hey, two chooks. Um. How wide are the crossbars? They look very small. They are extremely small. Uh, let me measure them. As long as we're doing measurements. Why the heck not? Uh, measure, measurements? These little guys? I wouldn't worry about these little guys. Uh, 100 nanometers. That's the size everybody wants me to look at, uh, you know, can I look at bacteria or viruses or something? This is the sort of size range that those are in. That's what they would look like, little kind of blobs, you know, they're not very big. So, sort of in the size range of a coronavirus right there. That's actually a pretty, a pretty good question. Then, could be could a could a virus fit through that hole, or is it a antiviral defense mechanism? It could be. <laughs> I mean, they they have four covers on there for a reason. They don't want to have an open passageway through the areola for things to get in, like a virus. Yeah. So they could big be enough for there. water and nutrients. Yep. Smaller than fungus and virus. Maybe. They do look a lot like a sieve, or a, col- mm-hmm. or a colander, so maybe there's a reason for that. <laughs> it's probably not an accident. Yeah, there are some secondary connections in the back. Uh, that you can see Uh, because the the little pieces go down like into the internal part and I think there's probably a secondary spoke on the inside we saw the inside view of one of these really at the beginning of the stream where it looked like the inside had more of a platform on the back side and the outside just had these spokes but they were different Uh, they didn't have a blob in the middle like these do so they were a little bit more like uh, like total wheels or spokes without the central bullseye. So, yeah, and also up against the spines here again, so. things for no reason. There we go. Uh, probably a good idea to take a whole picture of this. Instead of just the artsy ones. I don't think I did one that was like that, did I? No, not at this specimen. Been streaming for two hours on the SEM. Feels like I've been here for about an hour, maybe less. <laughs> We're in the time time compression. Yeah. Happy little accidents. Happy little connections. We get our Bob Ross on. Bob Ross taught me to paint, so there you go. Do you do a lot of painting? Yeah, we have some up in our apartment. Do you use a, a mighty knife? Occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a pet squirrel? No, no, I don't have a pet squirrel. All right, we'll see you later, Pacific. Um, 
If I can get a pet squirrel into the lab, I would bring one in. I have a pet cicada today. I put it back outside. And I, I got a great picture of a dragonfly this morning. There was one on the sidewalk outside the building. And I found the cicada, and then I was walking in, and I found this uh, like bright yellow dragonfly that I don't recognize. Um, I know most of the, the, the long distance dragonflies I can never get pictures of because they're always flying around. And usually as I drive around Terre Haute, there's like a dragonfly like, you know, in the traffic with us that I can never get a good image of because they're, they're out moving around. Um, but I had like yellow stripes and yellow, bright yellow bands around the wings. And, uh, and I thought, oh, if I leave it here, someone's going to step on it because it was like right outside the door. So uh, I went over and tried to pick it up, and it did not seem to care. And then I just kept nudging it until it flew off, but uh, not until yeah. after I got the pictures of it that I wanted. So Mallory won't let me bring bugs into the lab and just let them fly around. She thinks that's a bad idea. That's a yeah. That's probably a good policy. I mean, I think we could have a pet moth in there. Pet moth. <laughs> She's no fun. You're no fun, Mallory, wherever you are. Uh, Open set says, my uncle has occasionally adopted baby squirrels when they get orphaned by hurricanes. Oh. Does he keep them in his pocket while he paints? Cause, uh, and does he feed him little nuts while he paints? Because maybe your uncle is someone we all know. I like the bottom of that where you can where you can see the this weird ridge. This, well, I was going to say the sieve coverings on edge, so you can see the whole oh, yeah. area. Yeah, there. As I and then, yeah, that ridge from the girdle band again. I think that they're halfway between. Mm-hmm. I think you can see that they're not quite loculate. They're halfway between the maybe a little bit closer to the outside, but they're like depressed. And then there's like a big indentation here. So. Not bad. What's this yeah. one look like? We're getting a lot of Alicosiris today from Grove Lake, which uh, some oh, of the it's... other samples did not. This one has the spines that are like interwoven. In uh, the ones that Mark Edlin described, uh, Eosyra, that's not Olicosyra, but they're like this, only the spines are super long. Yeah. They're like Eosyra-like spines. That Mark would like to see this. Well, since he's not here, we'll just move on. <laughs> <laughs> That'll teach him. Yeah, those, the Eosiris spines are, what, half the valve, half the length of the valve or so. Yeah, they're pretty Very long. Big. Pretty weird. These are also a weird shape for an Olicosire. But then Eosiris is something like 50 million years old. Yeah, it's older. We're in the Pliocene here, so, right? Yeah. Cyber Squirrel 1 is a web page relevant to why bugs and rodents might not be allowed in the lab. <laughs> oh, really? Uh, I don't know if you follow Peachops, but there's a streamer named Peachops who uh, has uh, a squirrel, ground squirrel, in his uh, videos, in his under underwater lair. So we're actually in the Miocene here. Oh, are we still in the Miocene? Yeah. Okay. 
Maybe it's a myocyra. <laughs> There you go. Give Peach Ops a shout out. I had to look it up because it was close to the to the border. It's right right Maya, on. There. Yeah, Miocene ended at five point three million. Close enough. Close Latest. Close enough that I had to look it up. <laughs> Latest Miocene. That's how we address that. Huh. What are you hiding? No, oh, they're just really globular spines. They're not. They're not so regular. Okay. Like, uh... I was looking at the same thing. That's why when you went, huh? I was like, hmm. huh. Yeah, they're they're just like lazily put together. They're not there's really not a, a good policy on how to make a spine in this diatom. There's one thing I can't stand, it's a lazy diatom. <laughs> Won't tolerate them. But they seem to always come off of two costi. Which at least some regularity. Yeah, they got so that they going. Make, they make Y's, Y shaped. These things right here. Yeah. I will call them Y shaped spines. Y Osiris. Y shaped spines. Perfect. Really more like inverted wise, but if anybody asks why I named something stuff, Usually. I'll just say Joe did it. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just fault. I can take that blame. What's that Greek letter that looks like an upside down? Is that a lambda? It is. That's lambda, yeah. Ooh. Is, uh... You've seen a lot of that one today. Yeah. What is this? Whoa, what is this? I thought that would resolve itself into an answer for me, but it hasn't. Huh. Uh, like a tiny ulnaria. Like the world's shortest ulnaria. We need to get ourselves a fragilaria expert on the team. So that we don't have to deal with this crap. Yeah, that's not me. <laughs> <laughs> I want uh, 75 degrees. Yeah. Let's do it. Where'd it go? See? Maximized. That's what the rotation is for. Poke it up for covers. And speculate spines. never know what it is if we don't look. Oh, you made lambdas in the channel. Good. 
there an alt plus for that open set or did you have to go into word and or a website and copy them in I got this super long cable for my headphones and uh, now I can plug them in and be super far away from the Oh, I got it. You got a website with all the math Unicode symbols ready. Good idea. You might, you never know when you might need to throw math symbols at the channel. I get the, I get the feeling Mark's not coming. Yeah. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> um, oh, it says he joined. Joined personal meeting room. Maybe he went into a different uh, Zoom channel. Or maybe he's in here and I didn't notice. I didn't. It didn't beep at me. I went in the one that you joined, so... I will send him the link that I joined. Good idea. He probably figures that we already left, but we didn't. And I'll probably be on for at least another 45 minutes, so... Well, I don't know what we're looking at. Yeah, it's like a little tiny Alnaria. Tiny, short Alnaria. Is is a central highline region required for an Alnaria, or do the, just some of them happen to have that? I think some of them just have it. If Mark shows up, we'll ask him. See, they look like they're straight across from each other. They're not mm -hmm. alternating. Alnaria. I'm just gonna put a maybe Alnaria. Somebody squeaking. Oh yeah, that's the dog found his squeaky <laughs> toy. <laughs> I figured it wasn't your wife. <laughs> <laughs> I forget how sensitive this mic is sometimes. These, uh, the microphone that I have, this uh, hot pink one, goes with me everywhere nowadays and uh, what the heck is going on here what am I looking at is it another mystery uh yeah I don't... hmm What? <laughs> what is that? So, right now I'm convinced it's organic. <laughs> and that's about it. What 
is that? Is that a process? How big is this? Uh, I guess, I mean, it's diatom size, but... <laughs> what is this? This looks very diatom, like, right here. It, uh... Huh. It really, if that shape were to continue, how many sides would it have? Maybe six or seven? Yeah. What are we looking at? <laughs> uh... Check out that feathered stuff at the top edge. Might get some insight. This thing? Up here? Yeah, where it where it looks like it's peeling away a little bit. Yeah, it looks like maybe it's double thick. Like we have two walls. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe it's just a plate of something. But this looks like it's part of it. Mm-hmm. I thought maybe it was just a little diatom stuck on it, but it's broken, whatever it is. to keep an eye out for that thing. Also, what was this thing up here? Oh, okay. Uh, like Cyclotella Meninginina almost. Sure. Whatever that was, it's really weird. Yeah, I don't know. It's very Trying like it very think much. Of other things that live in lakes. Looks diatom like, but just a piece of something. I can't tell. Boring. Alcacera. Top view. Little tiny guy we've seen a bunch of. Like a crater in the outside of it. Mm hmm. I do feel like we're starting to get a handle on at least a number of species that we're looking at. Yeah. Well, that's just it. The longer you look at stuff in the SEM, it's like, nope, that's that one. That's mm -hmm. definitely this one. It becomes less of a chore to identify. That's why we're here. What? That is like a two and a half micron diatom. <laughs> I think it's just like a... That's terrible. <laughs> I think it's like a little fragilaria. <laughs> I'm willing to just throw that into Star Cyrella and move on. Yeah, Pinata, nothing special. <laughs> <laughs> it it's unfortunate that it was so full of junk. <laughs> right. A little too small. We need to throw that one back and let it grow a bit.
fragments. I'm getting close to the edge. Oh, there's like two edges. There's like a drying rim. Hmm. That's interesting. That is a central photo portula. That's new. I haven't seen this one yet. This looks like Meningeniana. It's a... Uh... Yeah. Like... <laughs> what is this? Remember Portula? Okay. Those are photo Portula all the way around, and then there's this thing. It's... Uh, uh, yeah, that's yeah, a little yeah. weird, though. Yeah, Meneginiana with huge Ruma Portula. That's a little weird, where that is. A little weird. Also, I think I could see into this thing a little bit. Oh, you can. Just the tiniest bit. You can see the fabric of the... Yeah. That's interesting. Let's just see what this looks like. Yeah, I have no idea what's going on with that from Portula. It's like on a gooseneck. <laughs> that's not what that's not the way that's supposed to look. Not got a it, little, got a little extreme with the, with the Rima Portula. That's not how that goes. Can you uh, tilt to a different angle and get one at some point? Get uh, this thing. Yeah. You know how we're looking at it straight on. It might be nice to. I can try. Yeah. You know, if Minneginiana has persisted for six million years and the only thing that's really changed is the length of the <laughs> internal rim of Portula, that's a bit remarkable in itself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it also only had one central photo Portula, which I guess is kind of weird, but I don't know. But this is pretty small. But... I would look at that, and uh, everything else looks like Meningeniana to me, pretty much.
What a weirdo. Yeah, it's just standing like super high up off of the costi. Mm hmm. Well, this is the first one in here that we looked at and said a species name to, at least. It's a cyclotella. <laughs> that one I'm willing to call cyclotella. That's a classic cyclotella. No areoli. Central photoportula. Rheumaporchula is in the right place. Mantle photoportula are in the right place. Alveolar chambers are the right shape. That's just a weird rheumaporchula, that's all. Yeah. I mean, it's like... way up off of the costi. And I can't tell if it looks like it's facing, like the lips are facing in a direction. Yeah, it looks like it turned 90 and yeah. it was facing. Like some sort of a tower with the lips facing out. Mm -hmm. Super weird. Did we get one of the whole specimen here? No, I'm gonna do that. It's on my, before we start messing with it. <laughs> Transverse undulation. It's got all the things. See these little ticks up here? Yeah, little where tiny. The, where the girdle band slides in or something. Those are where the spines from the adjacent uh, cell touch the outside edge of the, the spines sit in those. Like, are they that big? Normally, that's what that mark is. Hmm. So I'm going to go with yes. <laughs> it's where the spines from the other valve overlap, basically, with, when it's, uh, you know, they, they make, yeah. they're making the valves like this, and then the spines usually sort of come through there. Well, it looked to me like the the other valve was attached. Could be. I don't know. It looked like three-dimensional, yeah. Like the bottom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't look closely at it. I was busy trying to figure out what was going on in the middle. Yeah. As usual. So, I don't know how many, how common the... Uh, Mantiphotoportula are for meningineina, but it's two in a row, gap, two in a row, gap, two in a row, gap. <laughs> for this thing. So far. <laughs> and that's a weird pattern to me. Is there some that have more than two? No, that's back to the same pattern. Two in a row gap. That is really strange. Oh, there's one by itself. Yeah, the few SEMs of Meneguinia I can find uh, are just kind of random. There's three in two, a row on one two side. Two gap, three gap, yeah. Okay. That seems rather normal. Did they have a crazy long room of Portugal like that? Not quite. <laughs> <laughs> no? <laughs> Did it have a room of Portugal that sticks like a quarter of the way into the valve? 
No, surprisingly. Huh. Yeah, I don't know what's going on on the bottom, but you're right. That's another valve, because there's the spine gaps on that one. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's they why are. I was. That's why I was kind of thinking it'd be interesting to tilt this this uh, the stage a little. Yeah, let's just spin it, and I'll see if I can see if this Rima Portula is mm -hmm. facing that way. And you can see there's a whole mess of spines and things coming out the side of this. Spines, nubs, <laughs> yeah, things. The technical terms that we use. The uh, whatchamacallits. Yeah. Let's see. What can we do? Hmm. We'll start by lowering it. this it because I thought ours was cleaner than that yeah I don't think it's that one Oh, there it is. It is actually two valves. Oh. <laughs> That's cool. Whoa. Uh, as long as we're up on the edge, why don't I spin it? get to see how crazy that room of Portugal is. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, let's go 30 instead. I think I still need to go a little farther around. <laughs> the mantle full of Portugal looks like they have three. I don't. I don't know a word. Nubs of silica surrounding these things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those are kind of weird. Let's uh, focus on that first. And this is such a weird view. Uh, let's see.
periscope up. <laughs> that is so bizarre. Uh, everything about this view is really crazy. Even this thing looks crazy from here. I think this is where Mark would tell us about uh, what diatoms do when they have too much silica. Yeah, this stuff down here. Yeah. Yeah. Oops, I want it. Creeping up, as you do. Okay, it's close enough. That's enough of that. Yeah, that's weird. They have a lot of spines. There's a lot of spine action going on down here. Yeah, I think we got a really odd ball that are getting in. Oh. What? Are those spines in sets of three? <laughs> there are definitely a lot of spines coming out, like in one little area here. Yeah, uh... The one just to the left of the rim of Pultula and the next one over, and the, yep. I don't know what's going on yep. here. I'm hoping it becomes clearer when the beam gets down there. What the heck? This freak show. <laughs> Thing is going on here. <laughs> what? Yeah, they're they're in. Those are coming off the 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 Fulta porch. Yeah. It's like a cluster of them. Those are those those cluster of three and then spines this thing. that surrounds the Fulta porch. What's this or thing? Three or four. That's the rim of Portula. I know, but what's going on there? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Alright, yeah. so Meneginian ish. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Yeah, let's get that up close. <laughs> like that whole edge. Yeah, first I want to get the crazy room of Portula, and then we'll come back to that. Put a pin in it, we'll come back to that. <laughs> Yeah, it's, we're we're sticking around this specimen. For a minute. Holy cow! It's uh, silica poisoning. <laughs> yeah. Mark's gonna like this one. Yeah, probably. Just, yeah, there's just like one super long dude up there, standing up tall. So weird. It got weirder when I tilted it. <laughs> it was a little odd before we tilted, and now 
It's wild. This is just crazy to me down here. This. Like, Those tr triple. Broccoli. Triple spine. And then, yeah, that room of Portula exit is. It's not like any of the Miniginiana I'm seeing online. Okay, good. <laughs> so some things have changed over the six million years, is what you're saying. Uh, maybe. Or this one just has too much silica. Actually, here is one. There's so much stuff going on here. You found an image online with something like this crazy? Yeah. Nonsense going on down here. Yeah, I put it in the Twitch chat. Yeah, not quite as crazy with the room of Portula, though. No. Those are some weird-looking spines, though. Yeah, that's that's what I meant. Okay, let's take this. It's not going to get any better. The sides are pretty, Mama Bon Bon. And, uh... There's a lot of weird stuff going on at the room of Portugal. It's just like reaching. That's a nice burger. They make me hungry. How are you doing? I'm fine. Joe, how are you doing? Doing well. Uh, Jen tells me that one of her online students just claimed that there's about an inch and a half of snow in Terre Haute. For some reason, I don't believe it. <laughs> it's like 80 and raining. Yeah, it's 81. I'm pretty good at guessing temperatures. I suspect most of the snow is gone in the mountains here. But I haven't been up to check in a few weeks. That sounds like maybe you need to go check again. Yeah. <laughs> I also send this out to Andy and see what he thinks about it. I bet he, he'd probably like this one. <laughs> that room of fortune. <laughs> <laughs> Medic Indiana with way too much silica. Those clusters of spines around the fold of Portugal are pretty cool. Super cool. Yeah, and this like broccoli explosion thing down here is kind of weird. Super weird. Okay, let's take a look at it up close.
let's see if I can improve that in. That's about as good as it'll go. Looks pretty good. We'll just take a long photo for that one, because it will give us a little bit better resolution. Nessie, yeah. Like a long-necked, <laughs> weird creature. Definitely has a dinosaur like neck kind of crazy looking and then I think we'll probably call it after this yeah that sounds good so, thanks everybody for hanging out. We've got another, you know, five minutes of scan time coming. Guess we never did get Mark in here, but uh, he probably gave up on it. of weird structural components. You love the stream? Oh, great. Thanks, Whiskery Ant, for hanging out for all of it, and Orange Boy 25 and uh, Robert. Uh, it's good to see all of you here. Uh, we should find somebody to, to, to raid here at the end of it, but three hours is a good long SEM session. Probably I should read Numb the Geek. Do a little music at the end of this. Anyway, I force him to play uh, random music all the time, so I feel like rating him is a good idea. Plus, I think Joe would like him. So yeah, I'll probably, on Wednesday, I'll probably, no, Friday, I'll probably look at some more of this stuff. And I don't know if you're free, I'll probably just come in sometime and start looking through, see what I can find. Cool. Uh, yeah, I think we've got a pretty good go at uh, a lot of what's in there. Um, try to go through some of these other samples because we just looked at two stubs and we didn't even really spend that much time on this stub. So, <laughs> uh, and I can see if I can find that glass of sour thing. I still haven't found any other ones of it. So, yeah. Yeah, that'd be good. Um, I will figure out a way to share these, these plates that I've kind of put together so we can, you know, sort things, start putting, names and numbers to yeah groups um so that should be good so 
Well, I don't know. my meetings might be over tomorrow by like one, so I might actually get some time in the SEM. I got a bunch of uh, papers I've got to work on as well, so. Gets to the evening and I'm just like, eh, I'm gonna just screw around for a while instead. This weird. crazy tube shaped thing in the room of Portula and then some weird sort of star pattern external expression. It's super queer. Super weird. It looks like a splat. Yeah. I mean, the thing is just covered in spines and miniature spines yeah, that all I'm, over. I'm kind of used to that from Meneghiniena, but you're right in the like little couplings of threes and fours around the strutted processes that are really kind of interesting. And then this really weird star pattern tube coming out of the room of Portula is just bizarre. And you can see in this image up here, the lips for the Rim of Portula, that is clearly like gone up and then it, cl it clearly is like pointed sideways. Mm -hmm. There's the division between the, the labia pieces right there. So like it wraps around this way. Probably could turn it so you could see it straight on. so weird. This is the weirdest part to me right here. This <laughs> splat shaped process. I don't think I've ever seen anything like that. Super weird. The right turn room of Portula End is also kind of bizarre to me, but that's super weird. Okay, let's go give Num the Geek a raid. Thanks everybody for hanging out and for Joe for uh, being here as a guest. And uh, one of these days I will put in a little guest command so you can see who I'm, who we're uh, having as a guest without me having to tell it, I guess. <laughs> Make the robot do all my work. That's my normal plan. Scoot closer to the microphone? Am I too far away? I suppose I can. You think that's its tail? Could be. Could be. It could be anything at this point. I, I feel like I have hit a, uh, a bit of a mystery. So, could be anything happening at that point. Yeah, I was leaning, I was leaning back. We'll go on and see what uh, Nam the Geek is up to. Looks like somebody's yeah. son is uh, be right back screen. We're almost to the end of this photo. So I'm just going to hit the raid and then we'll see you guys next time. So probably next stream will be Monday from the SEM, although I might do some bird streams or something. And I got a lab party on Friday I got to prepare for, so so there's that too. Very nice. Yeah. Perfect. Weird many guinea.
Okay. Hello, I'm not numb to 